this week on Outdoor Bound TV. It's an early April dream destination for a Wisconsin couple who are about to board a flight for beautiful Queenstown, New Zealand. First, we head to the Southern Alps where we'll chase Himalayan tar. Then it's off to the rolling hills of the South Island for a spot and stalk red stag hunt. But no trip to New Zealand would be complete without experiencing some of the adventure sports that Kiwis are famous for. Incredible. Did it. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Mission by Matthews and Vortex Optics. Hi everyone. Welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm Kurt Walbeck. Well, it's feeling a lot like spring, so we're getting our ice fishing stuff put away because we're about to take off for New Zealand. Now we're gonna be traveling with a Wisconsin couple that has been planning a hunting trip there for just over five years. Now they're gonna be hunting for red stag and Himalayan tar with our friends at Letha Valley Trophy Hunts. Now I'm sure they're anxious to get to the airport, so let's head to Western Wisconsin and meet the Danier family right now. Hi, I'm Margot Danier and this is my husband Scott and we're from Omni, Wisconsin. And my husband, and I thought about going to New Zealand for a while, so we thought we would plan a trip and um, take us on an adventure. And so for us preparing for that, we have some stuff on the farm that we kind of have to get, you know, organized. So got uh, my partner, um, got him lined up to do things that I usually do, so he can, you know, he took over. And my son, you know, he is doing my part too, and I'm gonna be gone in the mornings because I ain't gonna be here for two weeks. <laughs> So it's, it's a long time, but it's going to be a hectic time because we're going to start calving all of our beef cows. And I'm usually the one that's watching them, so he's going to kind of take control of the ropes there this year. And my partner, he's going to be, you know, getting the machinery ready because it's kind of that time of the year to start putting the planters together and make sure everything was working. We own uh, 700 acres. We probably crop 700, 800 with hay and corn and beans and we raise uh, 100 beef cows, we raise steers, and uh, I guess probably our biggest uh, entity here is uh, the poultry, which would be turkeys. We're uh, one of the few turkey farmers, so, and we have uh, six barns, which is, keeps us pretty busy. We're going to be in New Zealand on Easter, which is fall over there, so that's a little different because Easter here in Wisconsin is spring. It's five years waiting and we're on our way to get ready to New Zealand. From the cities to LA is like a three and a half hour flight. And then from LA we flew, it was like a 12, 11 and a half to 12 hour flight, which I've never done before. It's a long, long time on, a, on an airplane, but it wasn't bad. So we flew into the North Island of New Zealand, which would be Auckland, and then we went to the South Island, it's Queenstown where we landed. And as we're flying in, you spiral down into a circle into Queenstown, and you see these mountains, and the clouds are in the mountains, which is just gorgeous. Um, we get into Queenstown and we land, and the leaves are turning kind of a yellowish, orange and um, the mountains are there and the smell of fresh pine is just amazing. So we just uh, started doing a little tour. All of us walked around, checked out the lakefront. A very pretty lake. Um, the, the town is set right on the edge of the lake and um, people are very nice there. A lot of tourists in this town. It's a tourist town um, but very nice. It's laid back, you know, here everything's, as you notice, is kind of rush, rush. Um, that's kind of our thing. So yeah, New Zealanders do have a saying that we learn pretty quick is no worries, mate. 
So it means basically settle down and relax. We're going to be heading from Queenstown to our uh, hunt, uh, it's a Himalaya tar. They live, you know, up in the mountains, basically on, on the tops of them in the rocks. And the weather there was tough, really bad weather, and they're calling for worse weather coming in, like the storm of the century. Uh, that's what they're calling for, which we didn't know, we just heard it was going to be bad. Basically rained, you know, every day there. Um, clouds were covering half the mountain every day except you'd get a few hours here and there that the clouds would you know blow through and you could start glassing. We're in the South Island of New Zealand not too far from the main divide on the east coast off the Rangitata River uh, hunting obviously hunting bull tar and this time of year the nannies and kids are all grouped up you'll get the odd young bull hanging out with them but the older mature bulls are either way up high in mobs or you'll get the yeah, the odd one out down in the scrub on the, hanging out in his own so hopefully we'll find him now because the fog still hasn't quite lifted high enough or the cloud for us to see the bulls up high but um, all we can hope for really is for that to lift up and see the mobs up high or run to an old an old boy down the scrub really Today is our first day in New Zealand actually hunting. This morning we uh, had a, lot of, or a little bit of rain, a lot of fog. Um, we've seen probably 60 to 80 uh, nannies and small tar bulls. Um, didn't have no luck and we're just not able to get rid of the clouds and just need it to clear up so we can see the top of the mountain and then we can go after them. Right, we've got a good bull spotted up here. He's only about 600 yards from here, so if we can close the gap, we should be good. We're just gonna head straight up around and underneath. Bit of fog pushing through, but shouldn't, it should probably almost help us to cover us coming in underneath. It's a grassy knoll here, and the tar is probably, I guess we said it's 260 yards, roughly. Um, he's behind some shrubs right now. We might try and get a little bit closer, but we're trying to find an easy way to get there without getting sighted by him. So we're gonna just wait him out a little bit longer and try and get another 50 yards or so. very steep. Uh, right now it's muddy because it's been raining steady. Um, so it's slippery. Uh, there's prickly uh, shrubs that if you don't have leather gloves on it you'll probably poke yourself pretty good. Uh, but it's very steep up here. We just made a long walk from the bottom. We came around the back side 
think it was all foggy when we came, when we got up here. Now the fog is starting to lift, and we're we're hoping the tires don't blow us in the sagebrush. We're just kind of trying to wait for him to stand up for us, or see if we can see him. Uh, we don't know quite where he is right now, but we think he is down in here. Yeah, the view down here on the bottom is just amazing. The big river out there, all the, just all the green fields. We're way up high. It's just amazing to see. Straight down and it flattens out. Well, what Scott and his guide Blair didn't realize at the time is there was a big storm front off the coast of New Zealand that was pushing in all that fog, more high winds, and a ton of torrential rains. Now, they were able to get down off the mountain that evening, but the next three days was a total washout, and they were never able to resume the stock on Scott's bull tire. Well, just like any hunting trip, you need to adapt. So right after the break, they're going to relocate inland, where they're going to see if they can find Scott one of those famous New Zealand red stags. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Mission Crossbows and HHA Sports. It's a 20,000 acre ranch that we're hunting on. We're heading up to the top of the mountain with the car and then from there we're going to probably, you know, we're going to do a walk and see if we can't uh, glass, glass and find uh, a few stags that we're you know, looking to harvest. Get out there on the mountain and you hear a bunch of roaring, uh, which is the red stags, that, like an elk bugle and it's the roar. Well, we were uh, unsuccessful at our tar hunt with the weather in the time that we had. Uh, we just weren't successful at getting mine, so uh, we ventured down uh, to the South Island at Leeson Valley, and we're on our stag hunt. And the weather's about the same, 50s, um, cloudy, a little bit of rain, same thing. The area here that we're in is a lot less, you know, mountainous. It's more uh, rolling hills, more pastures. Uh, not nearly as steep, no mountains here. Basically, it's uh, just rolling hills. So much easier to walk. So we see a few that are, you know, bedded down or beaded down, like they say over in New Zealand, um, with their little accent. They think we have accent. So we did find a few. So we did a uh, stock on them. We, we started getting closer and closer to them. And uh, we found one that was just really wide. You know, it's like, that's kind of the one I wanted. We're here glassing the stags right now. There's four nice ones down here, and when we came up uh, on the other side of the hill, we came upon a real big stag that has one of his sides been broke off from fighting. So eventually I just decided that we're going to go after the one on the, on the, on the left of us, which uh, was real wide. You know, he had just amazing horns that were super wide and tall. There was like four or five other ones with them and they could see us. I mean, they, they were watching us. So if, you, if they get behind that gully, can a guy get on that hole? By the time we get there, sometimes they're... What's that? Often when you get, by the time we get there... Oh, they're going to be over here. They're going to be on top. Just see what they do. What's the time? Five. Oh, it's getting crunch time, huh?
I don't see him anymore. Shell in. Yep. Right, he's at 310. Yeah, I'm on him. Then he decided to bed down. Beaded. So we sat there and waited for him to get up. Oh, he's still beaded. Okay, he's getting up. What's the yardage? Right, he's at 310. Yeah, I'm on him. Down, his ass is sticking out. Is it? Why the hell did I lose him? Okay, I got him. There he went down, huh? Yeah. Coming down hill? I've lost sight, he's going straight down. He's coming down the bush further. I can't I see think, him. No, anymore. he's out of view. Oh. Well, <laughs> good stuff. Whew. Well, we just. Uh, Put a good stock on a red stag down the hill here and put a 300 yard shot on him. He decided to, well first of all he's looking towards us and he just would not, would not give us a shot. And all of a sudden he turns broadside for about two seconds. He said he should bed down, so he bedded down. And then we, had, we waited for, you know, about 10 minutes, a little bit longer and finally we, Blair got up and he seen him and decided to stand up quick, so we let him have it. And I think we hit him, hit him in the shoulder, right, Blair? Yeah. And then we took another shot. He was, I think it was a pretty good shot. And the second shot hit him again in the shoulder. And now he's down. Straight so, down. that was a good time. Lethal Valley. And let's go and take a look at him. Oh. He is awesome, yeah. Look how big it is. Look at the kickers off of them. Wow, look at one of this palmation. <laughs> one, two, three. Well done. Thanks. Thanks. Good, Good guiding. <laughs> Good shooting. <laughs> yeah, Bob. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Landed in the creek. Oh, look at the whitiest. Oh, big front. Look at this side here. Awesome crowns. Amazing. Look at that. Hell of a steak. <laughs> Fell right in the creek. An old stag, coronet to right down to the base of his skull. Look how long these are. Twist his teeth are worn right down. Nothing left. <laughs> I nearly at the gum. <sighs> something to be up close to something like that. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. It's gonna be fun getting them out of here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, what we gotta do is get them up up there ways and yeah, get some photos. And yep. Take a look at. Start dealing with them. All right. Well, we come out after we had some lunch and got onto these, there was five stags there. Decided we were going to try and make a go at this one. And he, they, were, they were a bit far away to start with. We got down on top of them and they were too far, really. They were closer initially, but they went down the bottom and up the other side. And this one, the one we were after, was the only one that stopped. The other four kept going up the hill and were, before we knew it, at 400 yards. And this guy just stood there, got a shot off and nailed him. And it was getting low and light, so we had to kind of hurry up here. As you can see, it's getting dark. So, but we did find him here at the bottom of the hill, and very happy to see an animal like this. It's just huge. He is Un awesome. unbelievable to see something like this. Yeah. yeah. 
Leeson Valley. Thank you very much. And Blair. No worries. Good shooting. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate it. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Acme Tackle and Mountain Dew. What an incredible red stake. Congratulations, guys. Now, Scott and Margot's trip to New Zealand is far from over. In fact, they're headed back to Queenstown to enjoy some incredible outdoor adventures that have helped make New Zealand famous. If you'd like to see the rest of their vacation of a lifetime, log on to YouTube, type in Outdoor Bound TV, click subscribe, and search Scott and Margot New Zealand Vacation, and you can watch the rest of their story. And we hope that you'll join us again here next week when we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around the U.S., around Canada, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Suffix and BMC Hooks. Take one. I can't do this. What did you like about it? What didn't you like? Join my world. Driving a car or no? What, what, what was your best thing that you liked? <laughs>